right, this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And as you guys can see, got biochar char piles to me on each side. And I have returned to the home once again of Josiah Hunt, who I consider one of my biochar mentors in uh, all this stuff. And, you know, I've learned a lot from Josiah. And I want to visit him again, actually, to make you guys a specific episode on activating your biochar, right? I know many of you guys got excited about biochar after I made some episodes with Josiah. And maybe you went out and bought some, you know, raw virgin biochar. I like raw virgin biochar myself. But, you know, that being said, you need to activate the biochar. And Josiah and I already talked about this, but we didn't really put a big focus on it. But this video, I really want to put a big focus on activating your biochar. Because I know there's people out there using biochar and they're saying, I use the biochar and... Look, I, I, I grew a tomato with the biochar and without, and like nothing happened, man. It, the, the biochar stuff was even worse than the stuff with that, than without the biochar, right? And you could use any product, and any product may or may not work. It depends on application rates and all this kind of stuff. But a big part of it is if it is activated or not. Very important. And uh, activating it does not simply mean adding some worm castings, adding some rock dust, and mixing it, putting it in a bag, and selling it. Because there are companies out there that are just simply blending ingredients, putting it in a bag, and selling it. That's not the same thing as activating it. So in this episode, we're gonna get with Josiah in just a little bit uh, to teach you guys five ways on how to activate your biochar so you're gonna get the best results out of your biochar because you know I wanna teach you like functional gardening and teach you guys things that'll actually work in your garden if done properly, right? One of the main reasons for me that you should activate your biochar is because you'll see more and better and consistent results with your biochar instead of like running some test, you know, trying it and then it doesn't work and then you make a video to try to tell people biochar doesn't work, right? Well, did you use it in the right way? You know, so that's very important to me. But aside from that, there are some real scientific reasons that you want to also activate your biochar. Uh, number one is to balance the pH, you know. The biochar that's raw as it comes is, you know, maybe not the best pH balance for your garden, but once you activate it, it's a much better pH for your garden. Number two is to balance the macronutrients, you know. When you burn wood, or whatever you're making the biochar of, when you burn it, you lose all the nitrogen, right? So you want to activate it, it brings back the uh, nitrogen and better balances the biochar out. Uh, and number three is probably the most important thing, it increases the cation exchange. And so what is cation exchange for like people that don't understand that? Well, it's, it's hard to really put into words if you don't get it. I'm trying to rack my brain for a really good analogy. And the only one I could really come up with is, is kind of like this. We've all had that plant or, you know, a little potted plant that has the potting soil in there. You put the plant in there and then you like let it dry out just a little bit too much, right? And then you try to water it and then the water just like flows over. It doesn't like bond with the soil and until you literally dunk the whole pot in water and then it finally absorbs and once it's absorbing water it'll readily accept, accept and easily absorb more water right and that's kind of like the biochar if it's not activated fully right things like kind of run off it there's there's a lot of surface air that's not being sucked up with with different cool gooey acids and nutrients and humates and all kinds of good stuff and that's why activating your biochar is really good and also another thing that comes to my mind for activated biochar is that like the sum is worth more than its part. So now all the different spaces on the biochar or you know a kind of charcoal for that matter has different nutrients and acids and bacteria and foods for the microbes and microbe explosion in populations. It's just so much better. In addition, you know it's a lot harder to burn or to get negative results with activated biochar like I actually want to show you right over there growing in like a container garden. And uh, so yeah, let's head over there and show you how much biochar you can actually use if it's been activated. All right, so this is an excellent use of a bathtub when you're done with it, maybe you're upgrading yours, maybe you just go to the junkyard and find old used bathtubs. They make an excellent container garden because think about it, they all drain down to one point so you could even collect the water coming out and put it back in so you could conserve water in these times of drought. Actually, biochar is another really good thing you could use in the times of drought as well. But uh, I'm not here to tell, talk about that. I'm here to talk about this uh, taro or callow that's been growing in here and just under the shade of a tree 
in this soil here. And this soil, look at that. That soil is nice and dark and black. And the soil is 80% biochar. That's insane. Normally, you know, that's too high of a mixture and that would not work. But this was done as a test experiment and it's worked very well. Now, even in these poor conditions, and I'm not necessarily recommending you guys grow out and grow food in 80% biochar because we should have a whole bunch of other stuff, but as an experiment to show you what you what is possible and that you can't really burn or get negative results with 80% biochar if done properly and it's properly activated, uh, they grew these uh, terra roots and check that out. One big terra root. And uh, this is this is what some of the root mass look like. These are just tore out the other day. Look at that. That's uh, the root system and the taro. 80% biochar. Now, the only reason why this works is because this biochar has been activated. You could also call it fermented, or I like to say colonized, right? Think about it. If we sent men to the moon, right? We sent men to the moon and they had some, you know, packets of that freeze dried ice cream and the freeze dried stuff. Yeah, a few men could live on the moon for a little bit. But what, if it, what about if we sent men to the moon with like, uh, you know, a hydroponic system and they could start growing their own food and they could start producing their own air. Then we could slowly start colonizing the moon and start spreading out and people could take over the moon and, and we can make the moon a good place. And that's literally what you're doing with the biochar when you start to activate and colonize it. You're literally adding a lot of different things to the uh, biochar, you know, especially the microorganisms right super critical super important you're making some of the minerals more available and this is my style of garden this is biologic organic gardening right we're using the biology and that's really what makes the biochar work biochar in itself is not like some some magical mystical answer right but it's part of the solution and it's very important part of the solution is to activate it so what i want to do next for you guys in this episode is uh get with josiah hunt and we're going to share with you guys five ways to activate your biochar so you're gonna get the best results in your garden. So now I'm with Josiah Hunt and we're on his farm and he's gonna share with you guys the first way to activate your biochar. But before we get into that, Josiah, you know, give me your most important reason on why people out there should activate their biochar. Like, you're gonna show them five ways right now. The most important reason most why important they should one activate reason, their biochar? Yeah. Better results. Better results, yeah, totally agree. Hands so. Down. Um, what are we doing for, for the first way to activate your biochar? This is really easy. Any of you guys out there that own a home and have neighbors or even maybe yourselves could do. Yeah, the so grass clippings. Easy, ubiquitous, they're kind of everywhere. So I just got some fresh cut grass clippings and some biochar. I just got it real easy to remember here, half and half. Okay, I'm just going to dump it right on the ground and we're going to go for it. All right. One five gallon bucket, grass clippings, one five gallon bucket of biochar. Spread this out, wow, this is nice and warm, I like that. Spread it out and mix it on up. My, like we're doing a caveman style, but you guys, you know, you guys could use a rake, shovel, you know, whatever farm instruments or farm animals you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, Josiah, so, you know, what are we doing here and, and why does this work? Okay, what we're doing right here is we're creating a very, we're creating a moist, nutrient-rich, and microbially active environment. And what's going to happen here is this fresh, naked char is going to become completely colonized and matured by this microbial explosion that's going to happen in here. Um, and so it's gonna, things are going to get hot, there's going to be nutrients changing form, there's going to be microbes just exploding and exploring. And the biochar is going to come out of here different than, than when it went in. Uh, when it comes out of here, um, there's a whole laundry list of, of big, long scientific names um, that, that explain how and why, but basically it comes out mature. Um, and and we've, we've, you know, in the biochar industry been enamored with the idea of the terra preta soils of the Amazon basin. And these soils are just undeniably fertile and rich and amazing. Well, what, you know, how can we cre recreate that? One of the things we find is that biochar matures. Biochar matures in soil a lot slower than it does in a nice little pile like this. So 
mix it up in a nice little pile. It's really important to remember that the biochar is not going to shrink. The biochar that you put in here will not decompose. These grass clippings are going to shrink a lot. So it looks like, wow, that's a lot of grass clippings, man. It's 50% grass clippings. By the time this is done, it's just going to look like biochar with some goop around it, you know, around the edges. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cover this up. Uh, you're going to want to cover it up with some cardboard or banana leaves or some palm leaves or some just even some uh, some brown leaves from whatever trees you got nearby. Kind of want to cover it up and leave it in a, leave it kind of a, a nice dark moist place for a while. Maybe even wet it down if it doesn't rain. Um, and what will happen naturally is you'll probably get a lot of worms coming up in here and the worms will come up in here and they're just going to even do all kinds of more magic. Um, and uh, you'll want to let this sit until the grass is mostly composted. So I would say a few months at least. Um, this would be something that would be good to do in fall, especially, you know, if you're, if you're planning on, or I mean, you could be doing it all summer. Um, and, and then, you know, you'd have the material ready for, uh, ready for planting next spring. Yeah, start a couple different piles. You know, when you clip, clip your grass, right? Add half biochar, just make new piles around. And then you could harvest them at different times to add to your, to your garden. All right, just so that's that. That looks great. Super simple, super easy. Anybody out there could do this one. Uh, we'll be back at you with the way number two to activate your biochar. So now we're going to show you guys way number two to activate your biochar. And it's with two things that many companies actually already sell you, but yet it's not activated. It's just with the one bucket of biochar, one bucket of the worm casting. So, so what do we got going on here, Josiah? Well, I'm going to take some worm castings. About Cast five gallons, <laughs> and I'm going to take an equal amount of biochar, about five gallons. And once again, gonna we're going to go ahead and mix that up. Mix these together, and I and I think of this kind of like uh, kind of like a middle school dance where you got the girls and the boys, and the girls are on one side and the boys are on the other. And even though we're sitting here blending this all up, and you're like, hey man, everyone's mingling on a on, on a microscopic level, on the microbial level. Um, they haven't really bonded yet and you know this is not a bad mix just like this but I like to step things up a notch and I guess using that same analogy let's bring in the DJ all we'll right the DJ will dancing. get things moving dancing you know we want to get everything in here dancing around okay so I'm just gonna use some flowers so so what what's going on here is is there the interaction is only really happening at the surface and what I want is I want to cause a microbial explosion in here. I want to cause a microbial explosion where the microbes are just expanding and colonizing the surfaces of the biochar. And everything kind of bonds at that point, glued together with all the, you know, uh, I think we've stepped up from, we stepped up to a frat party now, you know, we're in a fraternity <laughs> party now. And it's, it's going to be a big gooey mess by the time we're done, which is great because that's the, that's the glues and the enzymes and the acids, the organic acids that makes a living soil so much more powerful than a dead soil. So um, on this, less than 5% is all you need, much less than 5%. So there was 10 gallons there. Um, one gallon, 3% of one gallon would be one cup. So I'm just gonna wing it, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say, well, about half of this. <laughs> that looks pretty good. This is especially good to do if you have like some old flour, some flour that's got some bugs in it you need to get rid of. Okay. And we're just gonna mix this stuff up. Now we're gonna mix this up, mix it up. Got the biochar and the worms casting, man. They're partying now. So, so Josiah, what's gonna happen, you know, because this stuff is mixed and how long are we gonna let it sit? And uh, you know, what's gonna happen to this stuff? Well, what's gonna happen is pretty darn quickly, pretty darn quickly, this is gonna get connected. Um, this whole thing, what you wanna do is you wanna cover it. You wanna cover it so it's, it's shaded and you wanna make sure that it's nice and moist and cool. And, and the whole thing is gonna get connected with microbial, uh, I'm sorry, with fungal hi-fi. With fung a fungal network is really gonna kind of lock this stuff in. It's beautiful to watch. The smells are gonna change. It's gonna become completely connected with, uh, with fungal hi-fi. And uh, what's important is that you don't need to use flour in particularly. The important thing is the food source. You know, we're looking for a food source. So molasses, I was just, I just wanted to pick a nice, very common thing that you might be able to find. And, and like he said, you know, if you got some flour going bad, that's a great way to use it. 
So um, other things that you might find in the kitchen or in a store, cornmeal, molasses is another great one. A little bit of molasses in here would do really good. Um, I just didn't have any molasses today. So um, yeah, so that's, that's what's gonna happen. This whole thing is gonna become alive. And how long do you need to let it sit? Um, this one's gonna be a lot faster than the, uh, than the grass clippings over here. This one will be done, you know, the longer the better, but really you can, you can harvest this in about two weeks. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it'll be very, very, very different in, in, in just one week. But, uh, but let, it, let it kind of finish up. So give it a good two weeks. Um, if, you get, if you give it two months, even better. But you can probably feel it already changed the consistency of this, right? Yeah, kind of like when you add flour to like a recipe, right? It starts to bring it together. Yeah, so already, and, and it just kind of, it really changes the consistency. And my goodness, tomorrow, this thing is gonna be alive. I tell ya. Cool, man. Up next, we're going to show you way number three to activate your biochar. Now we're going to share with you guys way number three to activate your char. And it's simply for you guys that have a chicken coop or have some chickens. You're simply going to take the char, open up the chicken coop door, and <laughs> chuck the char in there. Check it out, man. The biochar acts as an amazing, amazing deodorizer for the chickens. But Josiah, how does this exactly work? Well, it works, like you said, as an amazing deodorizer, and the chickens just keep on pooping and keep on pooping, and then you, you throw the food in there and the scraps, and it gets plenty energized with nutrients, and uh, there's actually a good amount of living microorganisms. But then, too, when you, uh, when you take out that litter, you know, it's a, when you take out all that litter, you're gonna wanna kinda put that in a pile and let it finish off for a little bit. But really, I only clean this thing out maybe once a year. Last time, last time I cleaned it out was a lot longer than that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the biochar really helps keep the odors down. The poop just seems to kind of just, it, 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 it does great. I mean, can you smell anything? No, I can't. And how, how often do you add char and how much do you add to your, to your chicken coop and how many chickens you got? Good point. I've got about a dozen chickens. They only spend the night in here and they run around and forage during the day. So I've got about a dozen chickens. I put it down pretty thick in there. I put, you know, I put a good half inch to an inch of kind of chunky char down in there. Uh, with a little bit of sawdust and a little bit of compost uh, and that works great and they just scratch around and they poop and they scratch and they poop and they scratch um, they don't really have too much problem with the odor and again I'll probably harvest this uh, I'll, I'll usually dress it with a little bit more char um, as needed maybe uh, maybe a five gallon bucket every every couple months or you know I kind of take it as it goes it's seasonal it can be different um, just occasionally redress a little bit more and then after a year or two I'll harvest it all and compost it for a couple days or I mean a couple weeks and then spread it all around the trees. All right, that's super simple. Hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Stop filming. No, no. Oh my god. Wait. Oh, so seriously, <laughs> this is part of the video. <laughs> Way number four to activate your biochar. <laughs> wait, I'm not done being yet. All right, so <laughs> wait, wait number four. <laughs> I'll be back in a second when I'm done being. <laughs> but this is part of it. All right, so seriously, way number four to activate your biochar is with nature's best nitrogen fertilizer. Your pea. I love peeing on my plants, and now I love peeing in my biochar because it makes my biochar better. And I'm not joking at all on this. This is super serious, being super real. So the thing you want to do is number one, you want to make sure your bucket's got some holes in it. You're going to put it on a, a patch of land and then pile up leaves and some uh, mulch and some soil around the bottom. And then you're gonna take some of that soil and mulch and simply put it on the top. I mean, this will activate your biochar. So, Josiah. Yeah. How does this work, really? You know, there's a couple different ways that you can go about this. You can gauge it on um, <clears throat> how many days, weeks, or friends you've had over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't figured out the exact science on this, on, on exactly when you know, how many times have you peed in it or, or you know, and it, cause it, it changes like your, you know, anyways, uh, it lasts for quite a while. Um, pee in that for quite a while and then just kind of let it settle. And what we find is we actually find life coming up inside of it. You'll find worms up inside of there and you'll find all kinds of life taking over. And then that biochar, you know, it's definitely been nutrient charged. That's for sure. <laughs> and you get a lot of interesting microbial activity in there. And this kind of biochar is definitely nutrient loaded. It's really good for amending around trees. I wouldn't necessarily use this right next to the, the lettuce that I'm gonna eat in a couple of weeks though. <laughs> unless, I, unless I put it in my soil in fall and plant in spring. 
So, but a great way to a great way to utilize um, to utilize a very uh, common resource. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, another thing you guys could do is once you charge your biochar in this fashion and do it a bunch, you know, then use this biochar and mix it with the grass clippings or do it, do activate it in one of the other ways that we're showing you to even supercharge it and kick it up to the next level. Next, we're going to go ahead and show you guys the last way to supercharge and activate your biochar. So now just is going to show you guys way number five to activate or charge your biochar and actually I saved the best for last because this is actually very similar to the recipe he does for his commercial biochar uh, you know that is available if you don't want to activate your biochar yourself so Josiah what are we going to do now? All right so this uh, this blend is uh, it's a blend of, of biochar and a very fine micronized rock powder. So the rock okay. dust that I like so much. Yeah and but the thing is is we're, we're not just going to blend the two we're gonna we're gonna bring out the DJ and let the party get going. Mm -hmm. We're gonna culture the whole thing so that they bond. And what what results is very interesting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start showing you how to do yeah, this. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right. All right. So this one's kind of like uh, I'm gonna give it to you, kind of like mixing a drink. One part, two parts, three parts. Four parts biochar and one part rock powder. So this is micronized. Look, I can squeeze it out my hands and just. <laughs> and you might want to wear a dust mask when it's you're playing finer, with rock dust. Yeah, it's finer than flour. So I'm going to level this out a little bit, and I'm going to start sprinkling this on, and I'm going to start mixing it in. This is like like baking a cake. You know, you, you, how you mix it in is really important. You have to kind of gently mix this in, okay? So I'm gently mixing it in as I'm pouring it over the top, gently mixing it in as I'm pouring it over the top. I'm gonna to stop right now because there's a little bit more ingredients, right? I'm not just gonna mix rock dust with raw char. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour, some microbial food, okay? In this case, that microbial food is gonna be flour. So I'm gonna add a little bit of microbial food and I'm gonna add some microbes. Now we're gonna add some microbes to the mix. So the microbes that he's adding to the mix are in the form of worm castings. You know, I love to add worm castings into my garden through any ways I can. And, you know, this, this he's really using it as an ingredient to activate the biochar. Okay. All right, Josiah, so what part of worm castings uh, or how much do they use? Because we, we know like four parts biochar, one part the rock dust, but how much worm castings? That was about one part. All right, at one part worm castings. All right, so now the last ingredient is... The food source. This is a this is the food source that keeps everything going. So this um, this is going to be about a half a part. You know, on a on a pile this small, uh, you have a little more leeway. Um, again, I'm, I make this. I make a very similar product, um, pretty much this, um, on a on a much larger scale. And we are very very exact with our ingredients because it matters, especially in a larger size like that. With small piles like this, you get a little bit more leeway. You can, you know, a little bit hot, a little bit cold, it's, uh, you get a lot more leeway. So, um, again, we had four parts biochar, one part dust, one part rock dust, uh, one part worm castings. Now we're gonna do less than one part of flour. Again, I'm, I'm usually using a different material. I use, I use rice bran a lot because one of my main processing facilities is in California. Um, and there's lots of rice bran available there. It's, uh, you know, it's an underutilized resource in the area. So uh, we utilize it for, for growing microbes. Okay. Now that's good. Now we're gonna mix it up a little bit more. Okay. Mix it up a little bit more. And if you remember, there's still a little bit left that rock dust. And now I'm gonna top it off. Get the last little bit of rock dust in there. Oh, sorry there, John. All right, mix that up real good. And John, can you feel that? Yeah, the, the consistency's totally changed. It's a little bit sticky, and it's like a, like really mixing up really good. Now, now once we got this mixed up, it's not done. So how long do we let this sit, uh, you know, and basically uh, ferment? Well, this is this one is going to be uh, because we don't have, you know, we don't have wood chips or grass clippings that we have to wait for. Uh, this one will ha this one will go a little bit quicker. You're going to want to leave it for at least two weeks. Okay, give it at least two weeks. Try to be patient. Give it at least two weeks. Um, longer is even better. Uh, but give it at least two weeks to, uh, to mature. And you're going to notice that it, it, it feels different. It feels different towards the end. 
And you know, we found that we found the most interesting thing with this rock powder blend. We kept on like, oh God, it smells so good. Like I could just eat it. And then we we're eating dinner and we had fresh from the garden beets. And I was like, oh my God, that's that smell. Wow. It's, uh, it's kind of, it, it smells kind of like, uh, like a fresh from the garden beet has that kind of earthy flavor to it. Um, yeah, beets taste like dirt kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it's important, I don't, I, you know, the, 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 the amount of rock dust to biochar is important. So um, to, to get it right, I use a, something I called the chicken nugget theory. And that's like, you don't, you don't want too much of the flour floating around. The biochar is like the nuggets, right? And you don't want too much of that flour floating around. So you can feel like this feels pretty darn nice, yeah? Yeah, it does. It's yeah. really well bond. It's really, really a nice, uh, really nice blend. And so this blend, because you have that rock powder in there, you're going to use this at a lower application rate. It's going to be very effective at a, at a pretty low application rate. So this material right here, you can use this very sparingly. This would be really good for, for down the furrow. You know, if you're planting large acreage or even just in the garden, a little bit sprinkle down the furrow. Um, you can even top dress around your existing plants with this. I really like this mix. It's one of my favorite blends. I've been making this one for only about a year now. The first time I made it, I was just, I, I love it. I'm really liking this mix. Um, so you guys just learned the five ways to activate your biochar. I'm sure, of course, I prefer method number four. <laughs> it's my own naturally activated <laughs> biochar. But seriously, guys, you guys should like use that biochar and one of the other recipes to even make it better. So just that truly, what is the best way to activate your biochar. Somebody just wants to do the best, you know, out there, because sh you showed them five, but which one really is going to be the best for them? Well, the best way is my secret recipe number six. <laughs> so secret, top secret. No, there, uh, you know, I haven't discovered the best. I, I, try to, I try to source regionally. So I have a different set of recipes I use here in Hawaii than I do for my processing facility in California. Um, and I've done work in other places as well, and, and I find the best is what's local. So, so source locally with your materials and with your microbes. I find it good to source the, source the materials and the microbes locally, and there's so many different ways you can cook this, you know. It, there's so many different ways you can do it. I, I heard of some guys in India that are doing uh, very similar stuff with, um, with materials that are common and, and, and easy to, to come by in, in, in India. So, right, so I mean... This is the great thing, right? You guys don't have to stick to one of these recipes if you guys learn how to bake a cake or the ladies out there, if you guys know how to bake a cake. You don't have to always use the same cake recipe. You just put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, maybe gluten-free flour if you're gluten-free or, you know, like a you know, sugar substitute if you can't eat sugar. Same thing with this. Basically, you're trying to add a few things, you know, a food for, a food for the microbes, like the flour, you know, some, some good nutrients for the microbes and also basically to spread in and get absorbed into the biochar, such as the rock powders and, of course, the microbes are the king of it all and use what you got and, and play around and let it, uh, you know, uh, ferment and activate. So just another thing that's very important, I mean, we showed you guys all these ways to activate biochar, but why should somebody even take the time to even use biochar and then activate it in the first place? I mean, is this biochar stuff, it's some newfangled stuff that you're supposed to buy at your garden center that at most garden centers you can't even find anyway and it's like this this new thing that somebody's just trying to shove down your throat and you need to buy it, man. Buy, 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 right? What's up? Yeah, I get that a lot. I get the people looking at me really weird, like, you know, what is this new biochar thing? You know, you got the next snake oil for me? It's like, yeah, it is pretty new. It's only about as old as fire and life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, it's only been part of soil formation since, so oh, let's see, the first lightning bolt hit something living on Earth? I don't know. <laughs> about that new. I'm um, sorry, that's me being, you know, uh, uh, you know, sarcastic there. So, um, yeah, biochar is very, it's, it's an important um, element of soil formation and soil health. Um, it's something that has been largely neglected and overlooked or just misunderstood in Western agriculture. Um, and we're now rediscovering the importance and the value of this form of organic carbon. It's a soil organic carbon that we kind of overlooked. Not just kind of, we really, really overlook this one. So it's an important aspect in, in, the, in the natural farming systems that we're, that we're, really, charting, we're really starting to, to chart our pathway through. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're really starting to get a better understanding of microbial, um, the importance of microbes, and all the different flavors. And they're doing stuff like, I mean, looking at it now, the world of microbial, um, you know, soil microbial science is just, I love it. It's so fascinating. Soil microbes. You know, the rock powders like we were talking about earlier, 
um, the humic and fulvic acids and, um, and plant associations, certain plants working with each other and, and, and cover cropping and rotating and all of these things are extremely important. And, 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 I, and, I, and I'm, I'm re I think it's really important to recognize that soil organic carbon um, was formerly kind of recognized as this bulk thing and now biochar, biochar is essentially well, actually, soil organic carbon is a little bit more than we thought it was. So biochar is basically another way to, to, to say biochar is, I like, I like this word, it's a pyrogenic, means derived from fire, a pyrogenic soil carbon. So in that sense, you know, I know a lot, I get a lot of people saying, John, I don't need to add biochar, man. I got a lot of carbon in my soil, man. I compose wood chips. That's, that's high carbon, man. So... So that's not the same stuff, right? I mean, we need that stuff too, but we yeah. also need the pyrogenic carbon. It's a little bit different. So real quick, uh, Josiah, tell people the difference between that, you know, the wood chip based carbon and the pyrogenic carbon and, and the benefits and the differences in it real quick. Um, okay, to, to, to try and understand where biochar begins and ends. Um, first of all, biochar was once a glowing ember. Just to think about that on a molecular level, I mean, it, it was a wood chip that was once a glowing ember. The, the hotter stuff was glowing like yellow to white even. Glowing yellow to white and then cooled off. It, it, the molecular structure was forever changed from that point. That's pyrogenic carbon. Mm. That's, that is biochar. And how does this act differently in the garden and in, this, in the soil web of life? After having after having gone through that after having gone through that transformation after it was a wood chip and then a glowing ember and then cooled off and became this black very different crispy kind of material um, it's no longer so easily biologically degradable it doesn't it doesn't melt away like a wood chip was the the, 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 the microbial enzymes don't break it apart the same way that they do a wood chip and so. It has longevity in soil, and during that process, during the during the during the firing, um, the carbon structures that held everything together remain, but a lot of the stuff in between is gutted out, and you you end up with this this um, structure that was designed by the DNA of that plant. You know, it's an organic living material that that has vascular tissue, and it's just amazingly it's like a geometric fractal in 3D or something. It's amazingly um, intricate the design uh, of these and so when it's gutted out and all that's left is that carbon scaffolding it has extremely high surface area so extremely high surface area and a long-term life mm. cycle in the soils that's two of the most important things to recognize about this form of carbon extremely high surface area and it lasts for hundreds to thousands of years in the soil wow amazing i mean the biochar, in my opinion, is just one of the very important elements that I teach you guys about gardening. Man, I don't know any other gardeners that are teaching the stuff I do. Visit places on how to activate your biochar, put in rock dust, get some of the best quality bacterial inoculants, and make your own bacterial inoculants at home. I mean, because this is all part of you know of what ancient cultures have been doing for thousands of years using nature's technologies, and we're not creating anything new here. We're just reinventing the wheel because we've been taught this chemical farming mentality and all these new things are trying to like marginalize when this is what we really need to do to have the highest quality food and you know uh, activating your biochar super essential you got to do it one of these ways and I know some of you guys still have a problem sourcing your own biochar I always encourage you guys to source your own biochar locally whenever you can and also start making your own biochar if I haven't uploaded it yet I will still I will soon have a a video on how to buy your own little personal biochar maker. Now you're not going to mm -hmm. make heaps and tons for you know acreage, but if you got a couple raised beds in your backyard, you know there's this little portable biochar maker under 150 bucks that I'll have a video on real soon where I'm going to make my own biochar out of my coconut shells that I can't use for anything else because they're so hard and they take forever to compost down. It's going to make some amazing uh, biochar for my garden. So yeah, source your stuff locally. Now, that being said, if you can't get any stuff locally and you don't want to make yourself, uh, Josiah has a pre-activated uh, biochar ready for you guys so you guys don't have to go through the process of peeing on your biochar if you don't want to do that. You can buy some uh, pre-made stuff. So, Josiah, uh, tell us about your pre-made um, activated biochar here and what we got. Well, this particular mix right here, this particular mix I call the dense mix. 
And uh, this is with the rock powder. So um, again, it's a, it's a cultured biochar. It's a biologically activated biochar. Um, and rather than just adding a little bit of food, a little bit of microbes, I added the seasonings. This one's very well seasoned. And the seasonings on this one is, uh, is a basalt rock powder. So all the materials from this one are sourced from the same region, the same basic region in California. And it's a microfine basalt rock powder. It's a, um, a forestry-based biochar, worm castings, and rice bran. All of that's blended together and then cultured for about two weeks or more. And then we can bag it up in bags a little bit bigger than this, put it in a box, and ship it in the mail to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I always want to encourage you guys to source your materials locally, whether that's rock dust or the biochar. And, you know, this is not Josiah's business to be shipping you guys just one piece at a time, the biochar. But, you know, it's very important to me that, you know, some of this biochar is available for you guys because I know some of you guys just can't get it. I really, really want to encourage you guys to make it yourself. You guys learn how to activate it. You know, Josiah shared his recipes with you because normally Josiah doesn't deal with, you know, home gardeners shipping one bag off at a time. He wants to make a larger impact in the world and sells it by container loads, by truck loads, by tote loads to, to big farms so they could get so they could get better results, you know, increase their yields, have better soil and more increased microbiology. So Josiah, you want to put in a word about your, your company and what you normally do uh, out there to my viewers? Yeah, we have two main processing hubs, uh, one right here on the Big Island in Hawaii and another one right now in California. And we source local materials and we make awesome products and try to distribute them to the farming community and the agricultural community as efficiently as possible. That's our basic model. Cool. So what is he going to do for you guys? Because I, cause I got him to do this because, I mean, this is like farming quality stuff for you guys that are home gardeners. And uh, he's going to put as much as he can into a priority flat mill rate box and uh, ship you guys anywhere in the United States and I'll put a link down below uh, to get that special offer with the special uh, GYG uh, discount for you guys. Once again, I want to encourage you guys to source it locally, make it yourself if you can, but if you can't, you don't want to, you know, he does have this stuff available. And if you guys are a farm or a big farm, big operation, you know, uh, you know, uh, call him directly to, uh, you know, work with them to get some of his pre-activated biochar directly. All right, Josiah, so any last comments you'd like to share with my viewers today on the subjects of the biochar? Yeah, one, real quick before I forget. Um, I, I try to keep a lot of this information um, active on my website. So there's a Pacific Biochar, pacificbiochar.com. So at pacificbiochar.com, I, I, I have a post that talks about my biological activation process. How I came up with it gives out some recipes and gives the whole basis and understanding. We have current products. We have a lot of information on there. So that's a resource for the stuff that I don't have time to talk about right now. Um, one thing I'd like to just just really push is that um, we're at a point where we're, we're shifting right now. We're shifting our understanding of what agriculture is, and we're really shifting in our understanding of the human ship. Um, I'm sorry, of the human relationship with our planet. With, with, with our local systems and with our global systems. I think we're having a, a complete paradigm shift in how we interact with this planet that we live on. And the organic farming uh, principles, you know, and sustainable farming principles, farming with the, uh, the natural systems of the earth, um, they, hold, they hold the future for us. They, they, they hold the future for improving the fertility of our soils for generations to come and helping take the carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it back into the soils where it's more valuable. Carbon in the atmosphere is a problem right now. Carbon in the soils is a valuable, valuable asset. So I just encourage everyone out there to keep on watching John's awesome <laughs> videos. He's got some great stuff on organic gardening. And I, 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 I ask you all to just, you know, if, if you've been burned on biochar, pun intended, um, <laughs> I, 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 I really beg you to just just consider it. It's, it's, it's not just some hocus pocus thing. It's a real part of our planet. And, and, and really, it's our understanding of biochar that's evolving and that needs to evolve. And I hope that some of the recipes that we've shared with you today can help you get amazing results so that you keep on farming and you keep on gardening and you keep on putting awesome, amazing food on the table um, organically. 
I mean, I totally agree with Josiah on that. I mean, we need to get back to the natural methods of farming, like the like the biochar, like the rock dust, like the microbes that I really like to preach to you guys about. I know you guys heard me say it a million times, but you're hearing me guys, you're hearing me say it again because it is really that important, you know. The, the industrial food system, you know, the majority of people, they're not using the biochar, you know, to increase their fertility. They're using 10, 10, 10, 7, 7, 7 organic fertilizers if they're organic. And, you know, that's just simply putting water-based nutrients that's not really building the soil and they're tilling that's destroying the microbes. Like, this is building your soil, not destroying it. You know, we want to get into not only sustainable, but regenerative agriculture mm. and, and biochar is definitely a part of that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I'd be sure to try to return a visit to a sign next time I'm on the, the Big Island here in beautiful Hawaii and take it some time out from my vacation, uh, you know, to, to educate you guys because it really is that important to me to, to teach you guys. But also, I'm learning at the same time. And from now on, I'm going to be peeing on my own biochar <laughs> and making videos about it. I don't know about that part. But anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 1,050 episodes now on all aspects of gardening so you can grow the highest quality food at your home so you can feed you and your family and have you know a higher state of health than the average American out there. Also, be sure to subscribe to me if you're not already for new and upcoming episodes. You know, I travel around more than any other YouTube gardener. I'm the most popular YouTube gardener, you know, and you'll never know where I'm going to pop up next or what kind of new information you guys are going to learn that will better your garden as well as your life. So, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Another exciting episode for him here on Oahu, Hawaii just five miles from Waikiki Beach, but yet I haven't been to this uh, the beach this uh, trip because I'm out making videos for you guys. You know, we're five miles from Waikiki in uh, downtown Honolulu, 